Hi guys, welcome to Cat's Crochet World. Today we are learning the single crochet and we will be making diff dish cloths in the process. So I just wanted to show you what we're, what materials are gonna be using. We're using peaches and cream, which is a 100% cotton, which means it can be washed and dried in the washer and dryer. It's a four ply or medium weight yarn. And the recommended hook used for this material is an H hook, which we are using today. We are using an H or a five millimeter hook today. Also, you will need a yarn needle to sew in your ends and scissors, of course, to cut your material when you're done. Um, you only need a small ball of yarn for this. This is not a big project. I am using a cone of the same brand because I like the colors of it and I tend to make more than one of the same dishcloth color in different designs um, because I like my stuff to match in my kitchen. Um, but this ball would cover it too. Also, we're using cotton today because of the fact that you can wash it. I don't want to have to hand wash my dishes and then hand wash the washcloth that I use to wash the dishes. That seems silly to me. Also, I wanna take a moment to recommend that you, if you have not seen my other video, to go check it out. It teaches you how to do a slip knot and the chain, which is the basis for today's single crochet Dish, dish cloth. I'm having a hard time saying that word today. Dish cloth. So let's get started, huh? So first thing we want to do is have a long tail. When you, Especially when you're first starting out crocheting, you want a long tail. For years, I would skip this part and just do a tiny tail. And then I figured out why <laughs> you don't do that. It's because your ends of your the ends that you work in will actually come out if you don't have enough to sew it in. So this is where I'm going to start my slip knot, which is a loop and then pull the working yarn through the back of it. And there's my slip knot. Put it on my hook. Not too tight. Remember to leave a little gap. And today we are going to be crocheting 30 chain. So remember it's yarn over the back of the hook, pull through, that's chain one, chain two, chain three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, whoops, <laughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. All right, we now have 30 chain. That's about the size of dish cloth I like to use but you can do any number of chain you want for this project. Uh, now, I'm going to chain one more. And you see how I'm holding the second chain from the hook? So that's the brand new one I just made. I'm holding this one. That's because that's where my first single crochet goes. We are now working the opposite direction we were just working, right? So now we're gonna put single crochet. You take your hook, you put it through the chain from the front. Make sure you get all of the little fibers. Yarn over from the back, right? Just like that. Pull the yarn through, through, through. So now you've got two loops. And now you're gonna yarn over again and pull it through both loops. That, my friends, is your first single crochet. And now you're gonna create single crochet and each of the chains across. 
So again, go through your work, yarn over, pull up a loop, got two loops, yarn over again, pull through both loops. That's two. Go into the front of your work, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull it through. There's three. Again, put through the front, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and there's four. Now, when I was learning, the best way for me to remember what step I was supposed to do next was I just numbered them. This was number one, two, three. See, three steps to make a single crochet. All right, go ahead and go to the end. And when you get there, um, I'll catch up and we'll show you how to turn your work. All right, we're at the end of our row. Look at that. Congratulations, you made your first row of single crochets. I also wanna point out that this is the hardest row of this project because you're working into that little chain. After this, your material becomes bigger, it's easier to hold on to, and it's much easier to see where you're supposed to put your hook next. Um, something I was just thinking about I should teach you how to do this first. Okay, so now you're gonna chain one. Now, you're literally gonna turn your work, the whole piece, turn it to the other side. So now this would be the front of your project, this is the back of your project. By the time we're done, you won't be able to tell on this particular project what side is which. Okay, so now you're going to single crochet into the first single crochet. So this first V shape on top, right here. So put your hook through there, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up through two loops, and that's your, your new row of single crochets. And each of these, as you can see, is a V. So just work your next stitch into that V. Yarn in, pull through. Yarn in, yarn or yarn over, pull through. Hook in, yarn over, pull through. All right, and now you're off. But before we move to the end of the row, I wanted to talk about tension. Tension is the amount you're pulling on your yarn. I always pull out yarn from my skein or cake or, you know, cone, whatever I'm using, so that I have control over the amount of tension on my yarn. And see how that's very loose? You're gonna lose your, your stitches are gonna become too big and wonky. This ten pull by pulling my finger back, I have now put more tension on my yarn. And that's how I can decide how uh, oops, how um, tight my stitches are. If I find that that's too tight, I usually pull up extra yarn from my pinky and loosen my my tension. Um, I find that my tension gets tight because my yarn is stuck. So instead of having the yarn come to me, I'm trying to go to my yarn. Or um, I find that my stitches are too loose if my finger is too far from my work, or too close to my work, sorry, not too far, too close. My tension does seem to get a little tighter. Oops. If I try to uh, crochet too close to my work, or too far, then my tension also is not as good. So just practice where your fingers feel comfortable and um, 
I'll meet you at the end of this row. All right, now we're at the last few stitches of this row. And I wanted to show you where to crochet to. My dog's laying on my yarn. <laughs> it's making it hard. Silly dog. All right, so I'm gonna look down on my yarn and see there's my last V. So this is my last stitch. Don't worry about this, what we call a false stitch right here. Just worry about this V, which is your, your last stitch of your row. And there we have it. There is our second row of single crochets. And we get to do it again. So once again, chain one, turn your work, and then start single crocheting into the first V. So you hook it through, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. And you're gonna continue to do that until you get your piece to the size that you want it. It's completely up to you how many rows you wanna make. And I will meet you at the other end. Here we're at the end of the row again. And remember, there's the false stitches on the very end. You want to crochet into that V, that very last V. And now you have made row number three. And again, chain one, turn your work, and find your first V and start crocheting all the way to the end. And then again, my last stitch and crochet to the end. Now I'm going to turn off the tech camera because you guys don't really need to watch me do all of my rows. But I will be back when I'm done. So while you're crocheting your dishcloth, I do want to recommend that you count your rows, your stitches every so many rows. I try to do it between five and ten rows because I've been crocheting a long time. But if you're worried about your stitches not being the right amount, you could count every row if you want to. Um, that's how I make sure I have not missed any stitches or added any stitches, which doesn't seem like it's very likely to happen, but it really is easy to do. Um, so just, like I said, count them. I just got done counting the last row of mine, so I know I'm still at 30 stitches. And so far, I don't know how many rows I have. Let me count real quick. We're at one, two, three, four. It would be easier if I do it this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 rows so far. And that's what it looks like. So, um, I think that was my only uh, suggestion, is just count your rows as you go. 
so that you're not, if you're not careful, what will happen is your piece will, can do this or do this or do this weird like in and out thing on the edges. Um, we're looking for more of a flat piece where the edges line up. Don't feel bad if it doesn't look that way. This is a pattern that you can practice multiple times. It's a good way to get your edges to line up right. Because there's a lot of, like if you're making a blanket, you don't want them to go in and out. Unless that's the pattern you're looking for, right? So, um, just keep, keep counting. And keep making sure you hit that first stitch and the last stitch. Those are the ones that you're going to be um, adding stitches probably or subtracting stitches from just because they're kind of hard to see what you're doing. Uh, I find one of the places that I have the hardest time with is the end of a row. And it's because of that that um, chain one that you do. You chain one so that you can get your yarn up to the correct level for the next row. Otherwise, you would have like this turn thingy happening every time. If you just went into a single crochet on the first row. Um, but it also gives you that false stitch, which if you're looking at it, it still has a V in it, but the V is on the side of it. Let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's your last stitches right here. Go ahead and do that one. Whoops. Oh, that's because I missed a string, that's why. There we go. And then if you look on the side, Oh, right here. See that? That's the that's the chain that we did. See, it's the V, but it's on the side. You do want to go into that one, and it's easy to either hit that one, or to miss this first one over here, and to crochet one over. But if you do that, your ends will go in and out. Each side will be a little different, and it won't be uniformed. So, don't hesitate if it's really wonky and you're not enjoying it, go ahead, you can rip out stitches. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I do it. Um, in fact, in this piece, I've ripped out at least three, four stitches now because I didn't like the tension or one stitch, I only had half of the, the stitch. I didn't go through both loops of the V so I pulled that out. One, I did a slip stitch, which I will teach you um, next week. I'm teaching you the slip stitch and the double crochet at the same week. Um, and that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for single crochets. So I ripped that one out. So don't feel bad about ripping out part of your project. It happens. And... It used to bug me out. Like, I used to think, well, if I was as good as my mom or my grandma, I wouldn't have to rip out my stitches. But guess what? I'm as good as they are or were. Grandma had a stroke and can't crochet anymore, and my mom has passed away since then. But you know what? They still rip their stuff out too. So it's not a big deal. All right, coming to the end of another row. And now let's take a moment to count our stitches so that we make sure we still have 30. So you chain one and turn. And one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
15, oops, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, oops, 29, and 30. There. I have not lost any stitches so far, and it is definitely still flat. All right, I'll see you towards the end. Okay, I have now just completed row 30. What we're going to do next is put a border on this line or on this dish cloth so that it looks finished, has a finished look to it. So in order to do that, the first thing you're going to do is put, so I've got 30 single crochets in this row. I want to put two more in this same stitch as the last one I did. That gives you a corner. See how that turns your material around? Now you're going to single crochet down the length of the side. And how I do is I just use those little um, pieces of the stitch to go down along the side. And this will also help your edges look clean. So if you do have a little bit of wobbling back and forth, this will help clean them up. And see how I'm single crocheting and just spots, but I wanna make sure I'm grabbing whole st the stitch. So I've got something to work around. That's what kind of gives it its stability. And all the way around. Oops, um, probably, yeah, maybe, see it's kind of a guesswork where you want to put them in. Um, I just try to be consistent on every row where I'm putting stitches so that it looks um, even, gives it a very even look. Almost done with this row. Ah, I'm moving my yarn to my material. More yarn. Okay, now, whoops. I'm going to use this as my last stitch on this row. So I'm going to do three, one, two, three and that'll turn my thing and now I want to work in this this is your chain you're going to want to work in this stitch in the back that would have been the bottom of your chain you're going to work in each of those across the bottom Almost to the end of this row. You can see how this row took me longer to do than some of the others because it's a little harder to get your hook into those spots. And now here comes a trick. If you're confident in your stitches, you can do this trick. So this is the last one. I'm going to do three in this last stitch. 
two, and three. Now I'm actually gonna work over the top of our beginning chain on this next row. And all you have to do when you're doing that is hold the yarn next to your material. And then as you make your single crochets, you'll just crochet over that too. And again, you're just picking spots into the side of your stitches. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to look as uniformed as you can. And see how I'm working over the top of that stick, that yarn? Now I don't have to worry about it coming out. And I don't have to weave it in either. But I'll still teach you how to weave in your ends because we'll have at least one we'll have to weave in. As you crochet different projects, um, I found that weaving in my ends at the end versus so just crocheting over the top of them, I find that I actually go through and get my ends taken care of if I just do it as I'm going. If I wait until the end, depending on how many there are, depends on how much I get done. If there's a lot of ends to weave in. I tend to look at it, decide that that's not what I want to be doing, and walk away. This way, especially with this project, I know we only had two ends anyway, but other projects, if you're changing colors a lot, you'll also have lots of ends. And that's a good way to weave in those ends without taking up a lot of time and space. Okay, now we're back to the front and we got one, two, and three. And now my whole piece has one layer of single crochet around. And what I wanna do now is we're gonna do what's called a slip stitch. So you're gonna slip your hook into your chain or your single crochet, like you were gonna single crochet. But this time, when you pull up this loop, take it through both of your hoops and that'll give you a slip stitch. To finish off your work, do another chain, pull tight. This one you want actually really tight. And then, I always cut this part of my yarn. People cut the circle. This, I do it this way so I make sure I don't cut my, my actual project. Pull through, tighten down, and that is it. You have now officially made your first dishcloth. Last thing to do, weave in this end. Put your end on your hook. This is why we left ourselves enough room. Then we're going to weave it in so that you get to the bottom of your stitches. Don't pull it too tight. And you're gonna go one direction through all these single crochets. Like so. I didn't get all of my strings on my hook, on my needle, whoops. Then I'm actually gonna go over, see how I'm, I went through this one. There's my screen right there. I guess I should put more in the middle of my screen, huh? Right there. Now I'm gonna actually put it under the next one and then go back through. And what that does is that allows the material to grab in on itself and the tension keeps it from coming undone. So now I'm gonna go through here and back over right where I had already put the, the string. Pull it through. Now you can keep going if you want. I stretch it out, grab my yarn away from my material and I snip it. Since this is a dish cloth that I'm using in the kitchen, I'm not as worried about these ends 
as say if I was giving it away to someone. But I always think you should keep one of your first projects anyway, so you can be like, yay, look what I did. And there you have it. We have finished a dishcloth. Now next week, we are gonna be making a granny square, which will use the slip knot technique. We're also gonna learn how to change colors. So you're not just using with one, one uh, yarn, you'll be using multiple yarns. Um, yeah, that's it. You have officially learned how to single crochet. Good job. Can't wait to see you next week. And go forth and crochet.